The title of my message is Entering His Presence with Praise and Worship. My foundation scripture is John 4, 23 through 24. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So let's start with verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is. So this was Jesus speaking to the woman of Samaria at the well. And so he's telling her, but the hour cometh, and now is. So now is the hour when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. When I read this, I said, okay, well, we know when he says that true worshipers, then we know that there were not true worshipers for him to say that. And we know that those who are worshiping the Lord, in order for you to worship in spirit and in truth, you have to know the truth. It says also, the Father seeketh such to worship him. So when you're seeking, you're attempting to find or you're looking. He's seeking for people that are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. It says, because God is a spirit, the only way to worship him is in spirit and in truth. So you ask, like, what does that mean? The only way that we can worship him, as I said, is in spirit and in truth, but we have to renew our minds to the word of God. That's how we worship him in spirit and truth, by renewing our minds daily with his word. Worship just doesn't fall to the worship team and to the pastor. We should all come to the house of worship, and it's time to come together to give God honor and praise. So when we come to praise and worship, this is something that we should be doing on a daily basis. So when we come to church and to the house of worship, we should be able to enter in as one unit. For example, with me, I'll get up in the morning, and the first thing that I do, and you hear me say this all the time, I thank you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day. And you hear me say that all the time, for this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's the way for me to set my day off. And then I start to praise and worship him. And then after that, whatever prayers that I want to bring to him or whatever things that I've been praying for, then that's the opportunity for me to bring it to him after I've praised and worshiped him. Then we should also pray for the services. And when we praise and worship the Lord, spiritual breakthroughs happen. Yokes are destroyed. Things are broken. And praise brings us to a place of humility. There's great power in giving honor to him. One of the things that praise and worship does, it gets our focus off ourselves and back on him. Of course, because he's worthy of our praise, and no matter what we face on a day-to-day basis, we're prone to selfishness. A lot of times we can be very, very, very selfish. And so when we praise and worship the Lord, just don't take no thought of self and puts our minds back on him. Psalms 150 and 2, it says, Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. So we know that the Lord has done a lot of things, of wonderful things, excellent things in our lives. And we should praise him because of that. Psalms 35, 28 says, And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. So all day long, whether we at work, we not at work, we should praise and worship the Lord. I have my praise music on. I have to go and praise. You know, I have to do that because that helps me. That helps me to get through whatever it is that's trying to come up on me on that day. And it it really, really helps me. It's like medicine to me. There is power in our acknowledgement that he is worthy. He is worthy of all our praise and all of our worship. As we praise and worship him, it builds a closer relationship with him. Another thing that praise and worship does, it brings us to a place of humility. Psalms 95, 2 through 3 said, Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. So as we praise him, we admit that we're not in control, but he is. 
And I don't want to be in control. I'm not good with it. <laughs> but we done tried it. It doesn't work. Yeah. Psalms 35, 18 says, I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among much people. So we should not be ashamed to praise and worship the Lord in front of anybody. We shouldn't. I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to continue to learn more and more about praise and worship because I believe, I know that's where the Lord, he wants me to go. So he wants me to build a better relationship with him through praise and worship. Another thing that praise and worship does, it invites his presence. God dwells close to us when we praise. And Psalms 22, 3 says he inhabits the praises of his people. That means he dwells there. That is beautiful. So when we praise and worship him, he dwells in that. He dwells there. Another thing that praise and worship does, our spirits are refreshed and renewed in his presence. We're strengthened by it. Through his praise, we realize that God, he changes our situations, but he changes our hearts first and foremost from the inside out. Psalm 16, 11 says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Psalm 63, 3 through 4 says, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Another thing that praise and worship does, it makes room for God's blessings over our lives. And we know that he's a God, he doesn't want to hold back anything. From us. Praise and worship opens the gateway of blessings as we come into the presence of the Lord. Psalms 104 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So it makes room for our blessings. That's some of the things. And also, there are seven different types of praise and worship. The first one is Barak. It's B-A-R-A-K, Barak. And that means to bow down to or kneel before the Lord. Psalms 72, 12 through 15. It says, for he shall deliver the needy when he crieth the poor also, and him that had no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually and this is what I want to focus on. And daily shall he be praised. So we spoke about earlier about us praising him daily. And so Barak is one of the ways, which means, again, to bow down to or kneel before the Lord is one way to praise the Lord. The second one is called Halal. That's H-A-L-A-L. -A -L. And that means to shine, boast, rave about, celebrate. First Chronicles 16 and 4. And it says, And he appointed certain, he being David, and he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. This is an example of the sh mm -hmm. To rave about, to celebrate David asking the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord. Shine, boast about, rave about, and to record, and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Number three, and I've heard of this one. This is actually the first one that I heard of, and I didn't know that there were others. The third one is called Shabak. Shabak, that's S-H-A-V-A-C-H, Shabak. To shout loudly or command. That's Psalm 63, 1 through 4. So it says, O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. 
My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. And that's called Shabbat, to shout loudly or command. The top of my Bible says the thirsty soul. That's Psalms 63, 1 through 4. So number four is Tehillah, T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H, to sing unrehearsed, unplanned praises. And I can remember, Pastor, you saying Kenneth Hagin would call Keith Moore up to sing, and it was just unrehearsed, unplanned. That's an example of Tehillah. It's whatever the Holy Spirit has given you. It's not recorded. It's like hot off the press. And that's Psalms 34, 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Number five is Todah, T-O-W-D-A-H, Todah. That means to extend or raise your hands in thanksgiving. And that's Psalms 50, 23. And that says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. So the part where it says, whoso offer it praise, glorify it me. Extend or raise your hands in thanksgiving. That's todah. We praise you. We praise you and we worship you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we praise, we lift our hands to you, Lord Jesus, because you are worthy. Oh, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Oh, we worship you, we worship you. We lift up holy hands to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, your praises shall continually be in our mouths. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's your told I. Okay, so that's number five. So number six is Yada, Y-A-D-A-H. Now that one is to extend your hands vigorously as in complete surrender. I can remember when I grew up in the Baptist church, they would sing this song, I Surrender All. Second Chronicles 20, 21. And it says, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endured forever. So they went before the army, but they were surrendering Yada to his praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We surrender all to you, Lord Jesus. We surrender everything, Lord. Our problems, our issues, trials, tribulations, we surrender it all, Lord. We give it all to you. We don't want it. We don't want it. We cast it all on you, Lord Jesus. We surrender and we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you bestow upon us each and every day. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We surrender ourselves. We're our life, Lord, we surrender that to you. I will. We surrender that to you, Lord Jesus. All that we are, we surrender all that to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you surrender, you're free. Free indeed. That's right. You're not bound. Ain't nothing. You just, it, it's just free. Right. So the last one is Zamar, and that's Z-A-M-A-R, Zamar, to touch the strings, mostly rejoicing. And that's Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. 
Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord.